Hello again, this is Kevin Ring. Uh, today I'm going to show you some of the newest updates on the Event Master version 9.2. 9.2. Uh, now do note, as of July 25th, 2023, the day I'm filming this, 9.2 is still in beta. So as a result, maybe err on the side of caution if you want to utilize this in a live show. That said, if you do have the opportunity to test this in your shop or your warehouse, uh, please check it out. Uh, the hope, though, is that 9.2 will be in uh, gold release very soon. So you're going to want to see these updates. Um, some of the cool updates are, of course, for the PDS 4K. One of them is the Dante. There is now additional channels of Dante input and output, some more Dante devices, and really cool. Uh, not much I can really demonstrate for you here. Just note, we now have more Dante. Yay! Uh, if I select the PDS itself and go to the Contextual Adjust tab, under setup, you're going to notice a new option here to set the date and time. Let me go ahead and move my window out of the way. Ooh, ah, e. So we can now set a system time. Let's see what this means. So now when I go to my multi-viewer, we're going to see that timer is now an option available on the left-hand side. In addition, layout two of the multi-viewer now defaults to the system time as well as an additional timer. Ooh. I am moving the wrong window. So let's see what we can do with this timer now. So if we go to the programming page, on the right hand side where our cues and presets are, there's a new tab here for timer. And there are 20 timers we can utilize in the system. And I'm moving my wrong window again. So with each timer now, I can set it to be a countdown or a count up. I can set the duration and then a warning as to when it's going to start flashing different colors and giving me some type of uh, notification. When you play a timer and hit stop or the timer ends, it will instantly go to the next timer underneath, essentially as a timer cue stack. So for example, let's say I want to make this one 10 minutes long and I want it to count down. I'm going to now start the timer. And sure enough, on my multi-viewer, it's now showing me the 15 minutes of my timer, which I set to 10 minutes, of course, so that is incorrect. Uh, let's just do layout one. So notice it doesn't change here. It's going to only change on the actual multi-viewer itself. But either way. All right. So we're going to select the timer. Going to start. And the timer is away on my multi-viewer. Ah, here it is. So now I have my 10-minute countdown clock as well as my time of day. So that's really, really cool. Now, one note. The timer cannot be used as a source. The timer is for the multi-viewer, so this is to give yourself some type of visible cue. So we can have time of day based off of the system time. And then we can, of course, have the actual countdown timers. So it's really great for keeping things on track, but you are not able to overlay this on a downstage monitor or anything like that. But we have the 20 timers here, uh, and these can then, of course, be controlled via cues. And then there's going to be a timer controller on the uh, EC30, EC50, and the 210. So you're now able to utilize these with the flex keys. You can have the timer be dropped on there, as well as start timer, pause timer, and everything else like that, which we can also put on the, uh, on the flex keys. So really cool that the Barco PDS4K has added this functionality. So let's go ahead and uh, change over a little bit. I'm going to change to a Barco E2 Gen 2, and I'm going to show you the next big update, which is with Super Destinations and Super Layers. So Super Destinations are, of course, very useful when you're linking three and more systems, but a lot of people are apprehensive to use them in smaller frames and smaller shows because of how resource intensive it is for layers. A super layer will pull one layer from every destination that compiles the super. So you have the super layer, and then when you add local layers, that then eats away at even more of your layers. So you get, you know, you eat away your system quite quickly. So I'm going to go ahead and build a super destination. I'm going to add my screen destinations to it and I'm going to add a super layer. And sure enough, it pulls a layer from each screen destination. Now that said, in the previous workflow, I would now have to add a layer to each screen if I want to then have local layers. 
I don't have to do that anymore. So allow me to build some layers, or some inputs, excuse me. And let's take a look. So the other thing we're gonna notice now is the arrangement in the programming page is flip-flopped. Previously, we'd have the newest destination on the left, the oldest one on the right. That's now been changed, where we have the oldest on the left, the newest on the right. So now as you're building in a tangible order, theoretically, knock on wood, you don't need to do much reordering of your screen destinations. So that's a little thing, but I think that's really, really cool. So I'm, I'm now already laid out one, two, and three. So let me add some thumbnails just so we can see what's going on here. Do background. I'm just picking these at random for different colors. Cool. So now as before, I can drop in a layer onto my super destination and sure enough, it spans all three of my uh, destinations. Get out of the way. So that's cool. Now, because I did not add a local layer, I cannot add anything to the local screen destinations. So in the previous workflow, I'd have my super layer for my span and my sync roll, then I'd have to have a local layer for each destination. Watch what we can do now. So first off, I'm gonna build this as a preset. So I have background one spanning my three screen destinations. Now I'm gonna select this source. I'm gonna to go to the contextual adjust tab of the layer. And here we have a new option we never had before, where I can set the lay super layer mode from global to local. It defaults to global. I'm gonna to change to local and watch what happens. Ooh. So now what it's done is it's ripped apart the super layer into three distinct layers. So on the super layer, I can now pull a layer off from each one. Now note, each one has its region of uh, responsibility. So you do need to make sure you put the layers in the correct element but I can now have in, uh, different sources. So now that they're split up, I can drop in different sources on here and essentially have localized layers with different content. So like before, I'm gonna now save this to a preset. Let me move myself out of the way. I'm gonna save from preview. So now I can have preset one, which is my sync roll. And now using the other side of the layer, I can split this to a localized layer. So I can now switch between a super layer and a global layer seamlessly throughout my show. So I can do my big opening sync roll and then I can go back to business as normal. So these are just a few of the things that are new with 9.2. Um, as always, if you have any questions, ask them below. Be sure to uh, hit subscribe and like all that good stuff and uh, happy programming to you.